So, hello everyone once again, this time formally. Welcome to the Eustoria 2022 conference. This is our third Eustoria conference on legal history, a student conference for all students from the first year of undergraduate studies to PhD students. We've had two very successful ones in the previous years, unfortunately, both online as we've started just before the pandemic hit, who could have expected that? Hopefully this is our last online Eustoria and the fourth one will finally be in person in Belgrade next year. But either way, we are happy to see you all, at least on our screens. I encourage once again, the participants who can to turn their cameras on so we can have at least the illusion of a live audience and without Further ado, I give the floor to our first opening speaker, Professor Emeritus Sima Avramovic, our former Dean and long term professor of comparative legal traditions. Thank you so much. It is my great pleasure and real privilege to open the first session. Uh, it is something that I'm delighted with, um, and we are all sharing a great, great thanks to Nina for organizing all that and am I, if I may say, for being a mother of the whole event. Eustoria, the name Eustoria is basically her event. Uh, there is so much energy that Nina uh, used to invest in this project and I really hope that it will last for long as much as our forum Romanum is lasting for 52 years. Uh, there is a parallel between the two uh, events, if I may say organization. It gathers students and professors. It is something that we call combination of dulce cum utile. And I'm really very happy to see so interesting topics that we are going to listen to today and so interesting speakers. The next congratulations also goes to Nina as she succeeded to have so many distinguished scholars who are going to speak to the students. So the students could have a kind of very prestigious framework, which is uh, in many senses demanding for them. So it will definitely uh, give an additional energy to the students to be as good as possible. The topics are so interesting that I'm really sorry that I cannot join you for long because I have to go to lovely Rome, but to my unlovely duties. And uh, I just can give a word that I will come back to you at some point and that I will try to see the tape of the meeting because there are so many topics that I would like to listen. The first one is, of course, the one that is just Mark going to give. And thank you, Mark, for joining us. Uh, dear Sloba, thank you for joining us to be again at the Faculty of Law in Belgrade. So thanks to all our colleagues from the Department of Legal History. And I think that it is really just a time to start, not to spend a lot of time for introductory words. All the best, enjoy the time, and come back again to your story. Thank you very much, Professor. And now I would like to give the word to Professor Milena Poloyets, who is a professor of Roman law at our faculty and currently the head of the Department of Legal History. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nina. Um, after such warm words of Professor Sima Avramovic, I can only join and express uh, my pleasure and gratitude that we have uh, for the third time uh, on our faculty International Student Conference in Legal History uh, with many participants and really very rich program uh, so, uh, I, um, um, I would also like to thank uh, to our organizers, uh, to Nina and her organizing committee, 
and to all participants, students and professors and uh, all others who are willing to listen to uh, who are interested in our topics. Um, as uh, my small contribution to this occasion, um, I would like to show a few illustrative uh, examples uh, from Ro Roman pri private ro law in reference to health and medicine. Um, I will not uh, have a long speech, but some il illustrative uh, examples. Uh, I would like to remind you on some famous Roman legal maxims, regula juris from the digest of Justinian, and um, these rules were discussed a lot uh, and developed uh, uh, throughout the whole European legal history. First uh, of them is imperitia culpe ad numeratur from the context of the famous Lex Aquilia. It speaks about professional negligence. Doctors, midwives, nurses are liable for the procedures uh, they perform and lack of professional knowledge is considered as negligence. Uh, it is now most important aspect of medical law. Uh, in the digest, uh, the examples are the following. A doc doctor who operated well, um, sorry, a doctor who didn't operate well, uh, but uh, uh, then uh, another example, doctor who operated well, but was negligent in post-operative treatment of the patient, a slave who then died, or nurse uh, who gave wrong medicament to a slave um, who died then. Doctors, or a doctor or nurse is liable for the damage under famous Lex Aquilia to the owner of the slave. Second legal uh, rule is concerned with the human body in private law and it is liberum corpus nullam recipit estimationem. Uh, there is no valuation of a free man's body in money. When free person is wounded, he may claim the medical expenses and the loss of income which he did not earn because of his being disabled. He cannot claim the damage for for this figurement, for example, scars, loss of limbs, loss of eye, because there is no valuation of the body of the free person, of a free man. The body of a free man is contrasted to the body of a slave whose value may certainly be subject of mon monetary valuation. A third rule closely connected to the previous one is uh, Dominus membrorum suorum nemo videtur. No one is deemed to be the owner of his oven limbs. In case of slave, there is the owner of the body, but is there, is there any owner of the body of a free, free person? I'm citing the text of Alpian. For an injury to himself, a free man cannot have the direct action under the Lex Aquilia, only actio utilis, because no one is deemed to be the owner of his oven limbs. There are also interesting examples from the Roman law of sale. In the case of sale of slaves on the marketplaces, there were specific rules of edils curules, uh, unusual, uh, even amusing from, from our point of view today. If there be any physical de defect or disease, no mental, which impairs the usefulness of the slave, that is a ground for rescission of the contract of sale. I will read one of the numerous texts from the Digest as an illustration. 
The edict relates to physical, not mental health. But if a physical affliction should have mental consequences, say that a slave raves in consequence of his fever or wanders through the city quarters, talking nonsense in the manner of the insane, there is in such cases a mental defect resulting from a physical one, and consequently a rescission will be possible. In this case, uh, 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 if it appears in front of the judge, we can see room for medical expertise. So with these illustrative examples, I would like to thank you all and uh, uh, again to organizers, to uh, students, professors, and all who contribute in this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Poloyets. And now I would like to give the word to our third and last opening speaker, Professor Slobodan Savic, who is professor of the University of Belgrade Faculty of Medicine, but who also teaches forensic medicine at the Faculty of Law. Thank you, Nina. Dear students, dear professors, and of course, for the first dear organizers, I would like to express my gratitude for inviting me to be a participant in the opening ceremony of the third student conference on legal history entitled Law, Health and Medicine. It's uh, really a great honor and I think a sign of recogni recognition for my work as a professor of legal medicine at the Faculty of Law. The role of forensic medicine in medical testimony in court proceedings from the time of ancient history to the present day is essential. Here are just a few examples. Uh, Professor Paul Oyatz mentioned a uh, problem of medical negligence and medical negligence is a very current medical and legal problem in the whole world, especially in Serbia, not only on the basis of the uh, private law, but as a part of a criminal law in Serbia. But the first legal rules related to this problem uh, appeared already in Hammurabi's law in the 18th, 18th century before Christ. According to this law, a possible punishment for a serious medical error was cutting of the doctor's hands. Very cruel. It is assumed that the name forensic in the term forensic medicine comes from the Roman word forum for the square where lawyers participated in ancient court proceedings in Rome. Two Alexandrian physicians, Erasistratus and Herophilus, dissected the bodies of warriors in the third century before Christ in order to determine the cause of death. They organized the Greek school of anatomy in ancient Alexandria. And Antisius, a physician in ancient Rome, examined the body of Julius Caesar after his assassination. He concluded that out of a total of 23 wounds all over the body, only one on the chest was fatal. The first autopsy in Serbia was performed in 1839 by Dr. Karl Pacek, the personal physician of Prince Miloš Obrenović, and unfortunately he performed an autopsy on the Prince San Milan, who probably died of tuberculosis, very young. The first official dictate of the autopsy protocol was performed by Dr. Eduard Michel during the autopsy of the murdered King Alexander Obrenovich and his wife Draga Marshin in 1903, and that showed multiple blunt and firearm injuries, as well as stabs and incisions. I'm sure that during the next three days, you will be able to hear many other interesting historical topics. In the end, I will proudly mention that the Institute of Forensic Medicine in Belgrade, where I spent four decades of my active work, in 2023 will celebrate 100 years within the Faculty of Medicine and Belgrade University, which makes it an important part of the history of Serbian medicine and medical education. Dear colleagues, I wish you a very success, successful and fruitful work of your conference. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Savic. I'd like to thank all the opening speakers once again.